coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. It's definitely the whole experience, you know, getting away from the, the everyday hustle and bustle of going to work, leaving the job behind. I love it in the spring when I'm out here turkey hunting and everything's quiet and just the nature is speaking. They have a very strong hunting ethos and they afforded me the same respect uh, for my feelings. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Welcome to Texas Parks and Wildlife Television. My name is Heidi Rayo, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department Hunter Education Specialist. Hunting is a great way to get outdoors with family and friends and to spend time in nature. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the adventure. <laughs> It's going that way first, and are you shooting a different one now? Yeah. Okay. Pull. Uh oh. 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 Wow. wow, it's been a while. Not what we want on the hunting channel. <laughs> the opening of dove season in Texas is just a few hours away, and James Montgomery is getting in a little shooting practice. You haven't shot a gun in two years, so I got to knock the rust off here. Pull. Okay, cool. There we go. I think I hit about maybe 5%, but I hit my last shot, so I'm going in tomorrow good. That's so going to be a good day. This is James Montgomery, Austin resident, businessman, family man, father, coach, dove hunter. Definitely the whole experience, you know, getting away from the, the everyday hustle and bustle of going to work, leaving the job behind, leaving soccer practice, you know, <laughs> behind. It feels good to get away and just experience nature. So they're scared of me now. James didn't grow up in a hunting family, so he came to hunting in a roundabout way. You know, I grew up playing soccer and football, I missed out on Boy Scouts, never got involved in the outdoors. Didn't find hunting until I my mid-20s or so. That's when a friend invited James to go dove hunting. And I think I bagged maybe two birds. Yeah, I got a sore shoulder and a great experience out of the deal. Ever since then, I've been hooked. The great thing about dove hunting is you don't need to grow up in it. Um, as far as having a place to go, uh, there's a lot of public opportunities available for dove hunting that Texas Parks and Wildlife provide. There's right at a million acres of public hunting land available through the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's annual public hunting permit program. What about the water? We got a little bit of water over here. That land includes wildlife management areas, state parks, and land leased from private landowners and companies. For the most part, you just need some shells and a shotgun and a hunting license. You can be good to go and have a great opportunity to get in the outdoors and uh, get an experience and get the introduction to, to hunting in Texas. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Hey James, let's work this pole a little bit, buddy. Mom, I saw one! While James didn't discover the outdoors until he was in his 20s, he's starting his kids out early, hoping to instill in them at a young age a love for nature. Why is it heavy? Why is it heavy? Well, because they're tugging on you. So my kids are four and six years old, and I, I believe that they're, they're a little young for hunting. Hold it up, buddy. I think fishing is probably one of the best ways to introduce the kids outdoors because it's a safe sport and it, it helps them appreciate nature. What was that? You're all right. Watch your, watch your bobber. Well, more than anything, I want another reason to go out and hang out with my boys as much as possible. There you go. There's too many gadgets and devices that keep our attention and keep us focused on being inside of the house. Put it down on the bed. I want another reason to come outside and enjoy nature. Want to see a twerking video real quick? <laughs> For James, this hunting season starts inside 
on his iPad. I am purchasing my hunting license online. Combination hunting and fishing, super combo. Beats going to the store, especially we don't have time to go down there and stand in line. Well done. That was easy. The opening day of dove season finally arrives. James is ready. He's got his license, he's had some practice, and he's got a case of shells. A case? You know, I'm planning on shooting a lot of birds. Or missing a lot of birds. It's one of the two. <laughs> Go! The opening day hunt was, it was a little rough for me. I missed the previous year. It was almost like it was my first hunt. Shot out a bunch. I missed quite a few birds. A long shot. But yeah, we had a good time. This right, we're gonna be grilling hamburger. James is hunting with friends on the Bird Family Ranch in Fife, Texas. Brian Franca is the leaseholder. He's been hunting here for about five years. I got wings here, so. On opening day, you know, people were all around the field. There were probably 15 or 20 of us. Woo! I thought I picked the wrong spot. I thought they put me there for a reason. <laughs> I was like, that, this is why they put me here, because the birds don't fly this way. Across the field, you can hear gunshots after gunshots. Like, wow, we gotta move around. Eventually, you know, the wind shifted and, uh, and the birds started coming my way. Oh, wow. It got a lot more exciting really quickly. Good shot, go! That, that makes it all worth it right there. Did we each get one out of that group? Yeah. Dove hunting has always been a family affair for Brian. He's brought along his son, Ty. I don't go hunting without him. Son? As well as his dad. Don't you go out there and take my bird. <laughs> Brian's dad is great to have out there when you're hunting. He is everybody's spotter. Hey, go over your left shoulder. Over your left shoulder. When he sees a bird, Hi. he's going to let you know it. Coming between your mind. He's going to call your name. You're going to hear him. Jimbo, Jimbo. Brian, Brian, Brian. Justin, Justin. Even through your ear protection. James, straight at you. He got one. <laughs> He's great to have around, and it just makes it that much more fun. Right there, Ty. Right there. Ty is 10 years old. You know, I'm. I'm three times his age at least, and he was he was making me look bad out there. Good shot, Ty. Initially, I was trying to put the bead right on the bird, and um, you have to realize these things are fast, so you have to lead the bird, as, as Ty pointed out. You gotta shoot a little in front of it. You gotta leave your ego in the car when you go hunting, and just take all the coaching you can get. It was slow at first, and it, it picked up. It made, it made it all worth it. Just gotta have a little patience. Brian, how many you got? A lot. <laughs> Brian realizes that he has probably 10 times more experience than I do at this. Take him, James. He'll let some birds fly by him to help me out. Take him. To make sure that we're all having a good time. There you go, James. Woo! The good news is that I didn't limit out this morning, so I got to come out again to shoot some more. <laughs> I got four birds in the bag, and you're having a good time, so I'm not at work. <laughs> it's going great. I didn't grow up in the hunting family, but I'm glad I found it. I cannot wait to take James and Noah out hunting, fishing and camping and all the things that I experienced late in life. I want to start super early with them, just doing fun things and connecting and, and having some good quality time together. Now, about that case of shells he needed for opening day. Maybe one box of shells left. Hey, it's great for the economy. Keep an academy in business. That last one was a tough shot. It's a coin flip on who got it, me or you. I was pretty sure that one was mine. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. We'll flip a coin. All right, it's okay.
second time in East Texas, and love is in the air. This is mating season for the Eastern Wild Turkey. And turkey lover Terrence Jackson is trying to call in a gobbler. Just hearing that sound come at you through the timber and it's amplified. They came in quiet and we didn't know they was over there. But it just get the adrenaline going and the heart pumping and it's just nothing like it. If it was a season, he would have been gone. He'd have been toast. <laughs> I've always loved the woods, and I love East Texas. I would live out here if I could. <laughs> I was uh, raised in East Texas in, in Henderson County, a little town called Malakoff. And when I was a youngster, I was always going and running through the woods. I guess I just got interested in turkeys, I think, when I was a kid, and I was watching Wild America, Marty Stafford. When he did a special on wild turkeys. And I was like, those are beautiful birds. I started hunting Easterns a long time ago. <laughs> my first place that I went on a turkey hunt was public land, and I went there and shot at my first turkey that I caught in, and I missed him. And I guess it's been a, a, a vendetta ever since I've been after him. Every year, I'm turkey hunting in the spring. I love it when I'm out here and everything's quiet and just the nature is speaking. <laughs> I go in listening. On the turkey hunt, that's what it's about. It's about listening to what's going on around you and being aware. Two Jakes coming in. Yeah, I didn't want to come out here and shoot a Jake. Every bird I've taken out here has been a two or three year old bird. I just like to give them a shot. I come here every year, so if they make it through the season, they'll be nice long birds next year. Well, we know they're in here. See if we can get an old bird talking. The story of the wild turkey in Texas has been one of feast and famine. When European settlers started coming to East Texas, turkeys were thriving. One early settler wrote, the droves of wild turkeys are so numerous, they disturb the traveler with their clucking. But those settlers quickly changed the landscape. Around 1925, a hunter could harvest up to 25 turkeys a year. By the 1940s, there were less than 100 eastern wild turkeys throughout East Texas. Overharvest as well as habitat decline really led to the demise of the population. In the 1970s, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department started a program bringing wild trap turkeys from other states to Texas. All right, girl. See you in Texas. Yeah. And the program looked promising. Over the next 20 years, more than 7,000 eastern wild turkeys were stocked in East Texas. Now we're using a super stocking strategy where we release 80 turkeys onto one area of good habitat in hopes that the population will grow from there. Thanks to the success of these stockings, a spring hunting season has reopened in parts of East Texas. Yeah, they travel through here on the regular. I see yesterday's tracks and two sets from today. A couple of birds moving through here. When I'm on these turkey hunts, basically I love to get away from the busyness of Houston and work and the crowdedness. The sound of the birds, the quiet in the morning, and walking through the woods, it's something that pulls at you. But I can't tell if that's a hog where a hog come through and try to root something. Uh, yeah, that's hog rooting. Fair hogs can be detrimental to turkey nests. Typically, I'm prayerful every time I'm out here, and I've gotten good response. 
While we were sitting out on the sun was beaming, I said a little prayer. <laughs> I'd be much obliged if uh, we got a little cloud cover and got a little relief and we got more than what we bargained for. The rain started coming down pretty hard and so I used my best to block as much as I could. While it was coming down and I was sitting under that vest, drenched, I was like, well, what more can I say? <laughs> I don't guess there's much else I can say. Is this it? Are you, is, it is it over? Not quite over. Once the rain let up, something crept up, snorting feral hogs. They had her rooting up stuff. That's a danger to the nesting hens out here. Like at least pop one, maybe that'll run them up out of here. This will make for some good eating right here. This has been a long week. All of the ripping and running and walking miles through the woods and up hills and downhill, and it's just been a challenge this year. Even though it was tempting to take those jakes that first day, with it being Easterns and we not having a lot of them out here, I just didn't have it in me to pull the trigger. I hope to get out there and hunt them as two-year-olds next year and give them a chance to help repopulate the area. The turkey was here before we were. And I think it's important that we preserve this area so that turkeys can thrive here and hopefully the turkey population will expand into other linked habitats that are nearby. You win some, you lose some. We'll give another shot next year. When that season opens, I'll be out there hunting those Easter. See if we can make it happen. Each fall, as the leaves change color and the temperature drops, members of the Berkner family gather on their ranch in the Texas Hill Country. From three-year-old Kyler to 98-year-old Mabel, five generations under one roof together to celebrate Thanksgiving. I was making $400 a month and trying to raise three boys. We didn't have any money to go all over the country to make, for on vacation. So we'd come up here and fish and build deer stands and stuff, getting ready for fall hunting. Preparing for the hunt. For Skeet Bergner, it's a ritual that dates back to his boyhood, growing up during the Great Depression, when food like deer and turkey meat helped sustain the family during some very tough times. Today, the Berkners hunt and fish as part of a legacy. That's not real either. No, that's a cap gun. Passed down from parent to child. Hunter safety, hunter safety, baby. Don't point it at people. There you go. It's OK. To understand the Berkners and their ties to the land, it helps to know a little bit about their history, starting with Skeet's mother, 98-year-old Mabel. Mabel Green was the only girl out of nine children. Her parents were farmers in the hill country of Central Texas. To earn money, the family raised cotton and corn. To eat, they hunted and grew their own vegetables. When she was 19, Mabel married Joe Bergner. Together, they raised 10 kids and ran a 400-acre dairy farm. Each child played an important role in the family business, and all of them, learned the meaning of hard work. Used to milk 150 head of cows twice a day, get up at 12 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock in the daytime, milk cows seven days a week. And uh, that's all I know is land. Good. 
good shot. In the nose. <laughs> need to need to be able to shoot from a lot of different positions. And do your breathing, eyes, okay? Look at the orange. I am one of the Berkners, but not one of the hunting Berkners. Uh, so there was a, a little bit of adjustment on the part of the family to me and, and me to the family. But Look where um, you want the arrow to go. You know, with hunting, like everything else that the Berkners do, there's a real underpinning of family feeling and loyalty, and they're not judgmental about it. I'm getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. They have a very strong hunting ethos, and so they, they wanted me to respect that in them. This is my last one. <coughs> one more. And not to be judgmental of them and to be tolerant of what they like to do. And, and they afforded me the same respect uh, for my feelings. Whoa! Watch where you're pointing. Point it at the target. OK, grandmother. Happy hunting. <laughs> Get him. Yeah, we, we fixed it. We fixed to go after him. I appreciate you helping me. I know I've struggled to you. I got it. Mabel Berkner shot her first deer at about the same time Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, and the women got the right to vote. Whatever comes in, the first thing that comes in, a buck or a doe, that's what we want. We're not taking a chance on waiting for the big one. When you get 98 years old, you don't wait for something. You just go ahead and do it. And I think it's wonderful. I enjoy this. I'd stay here by myself. Oh, you would? Mm -hmm. We'll just sit here and enjoy these pretty trees. Yeah, sure will. <laughs> You see what, what we're looking at? We're looking at, at three three deer down there. And uh, what I want you to do is shoot the one on this side, that, that biggest one. Take your time, put your crosshairs on him, and shoot him. Squeeze it easy. Oh, I think you hit him. <laughs> uh, I believe you hit him. Okay. Did you see that deer this morning sitting in the back of the mule? Yeah. You know, I haven't been hunting in about nine or ten years, but I never them? killed anything that can big. Can you count them? I can count them. Let's see. There's one, two, three on that side. And then on this side, there's one little one. So that's four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. Yep. So that's, that's a seven point. In a few hours, most of the Berkners will go their separate ways. But no matter where they end up, all roads lead back here to the family ranch. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season of the year, for Thanksgiving, and for such a beautiful scene in the trees and the river and the grass. And we thank you for a wonderful hunt this morning and for grandmother and all the kids. Amen. Grandma, can you remember any times that you've missed? I don't talk about that. <laughs> what an inspiration to see the story of Mabel still hunting at age 98. That's our show for this week. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there.